Uh, welcome to the Art of the Witcher for Gen Con Online. Uh, I am Dressed Up from Hint Place, your humble host, and here with me are Cody Pondsmith, uh, writer, designer of the Witcher RPG, and Jay Kovash or Kovach? Kovach? Kovach, you got Kovach, it. Kovach, uh, who is the art director? for Artelsorium. So, I am going to hand you over to them and they can do the talking now and I will do the driving. So, see you soon. All right, ready to talk forever now. Yep. Now, um, hey everybody. Uh, I am, as mentioned, Cody Pondsmith, uh, lead designer uh, and writer on The Witcher TRPG. Um, and in a lot of cases, I'd be here to, you know, a uh, few facts about Witcher and talk about what's going on and like, but today I'd like to introduce our uh, our resplendent art director, Jay Kovach, uh, a woman who I could spend the next hour just talking about her, her various accomplishments and the, the amazing pieces of art that she's gotten for us, but... Watch it, buddy. <laughs> I'll let her do that for herself. Hi, everybody. As he said before, I'm Jay Kovach, and I work as the art director for Artel Saurian Games. Um, uh, we're going to go over art from uh, A Witcher's Journal today, and uh, some of that artwork is a bit adult, so there's nothing like too adult, but there is a little violence and fantasy and um, a few pieces of gore. So just, just be aware that if you have anybody sensitive in the audience, it may be time to shoo them out my grandma or whomever um anyway let's get started with the first piece which is the botchling illustration piece that illustrated one of the pieces of microfiction in a witcher's tale i'm sorry a witcher's journey journal third time the charm <laughs> i know witcher's, yes oh, a witcher's tale could be the can be the uh, the short story series that we spin off um, yes and no can it be t-a-i-l though because that would be hilarious ouch Mutations. That's right. Mutations. All right. So let me know when those are showing because I can't see them. Ah, oh, my apologies. Yes, they are up. It is oh, up. Okay, great. Yep. Your first Thank page you. is up. All right. So um, as you can see from that piece, it is the, this is the final that we ended up with at the very end. This art was done by Bad Moon Art Studios and they are, I think they're out of Malaysia. Um, anyway, there are two gentlemen who work on, on the artwork from this, from this studio. What I really wanted to do today was to kind of bring up how the process of, of art works when you're working in on a physical copy of a book, like the one that we have been working on. Um, so as art director, I will approach an artist and then I will, um, ask them for a piece of artwork, we agree on a price, we get a contract going, and then on the next page, you will see what I call the art script. Um, I'm going to assume that that goes across, right? That's now up. Okay, great, thank you. So the art script is, as you can see, it's 10, they can be very in depth, they can be very long, depending on the piece of artwork. This one is a little bit more brief because we had um, two character turns that we needed to, to show them. And those character turns were created by another artist called Mikhail Palamarchuk. And he created those character turns prior to us assigning this piece of artwork to Bad Moon Art Studios. So we didn't have to go into quite as much detail with the character descriptions, but usually you would see very in-depth character descriptions, eye color, skin tones, heritage, um, sometimes preferences for religion or sexual preferences if that comes into it. Um, and then another thing that we do, if you can go to the next screen. Mm -hmm. It's up, yep. Is great, is sometimes the artists will get confused about what kind of pose that we want the characters in. And the first poses that the characters were in were, were more of the botchling, which is the, the creature in, in Nyla's arms. Nyla is the name of the female character in this piece. Um, it was more aggressive and it was sort of attacking everybody. But what we wanted here, um, and this was Cody's idea, is to have a more tender moment because, because we, this person that is dead in the background of the, of the art 
is Nyla's friend and her child died from neglect, which is how botchlings come about. You neglect your child. And so it was a very sad kind of moment and more somber. You can go to the next screen. These are the roughs that we got from the artists. As you can see, they're definitely very rough and um, kind of one of those things where you really have to use your imagination to figure out exactly how you want the placement. We decided, as you can see from this first version of the one on the left, I think it's on the left for you guys, the one with the green figure in the background, um, we decided on that kind of a pose because it, it, it exemplified the tenderness of the piece. If I might. And, go ahead, please. I, I think one of the one of the really sort of key things, especially in this piece, was that uh, you know this is an illustration for one of the um, sort of internal pieces of fiction in the book, uh, which means that Jay and I went over this piece of the fine tooth comb uh, top to bottom to make it because the fiction had been written before we even started doing the art. So we had a lot of a lot of work to go over this sort of blocking with a fine tooth comb, make sure that everything fit the uh, the story as it was written, and that it would carry across as an illustration of the image. Yes, that's a really good point, Cody. Um, it did have to match the image, and it, and also we were definitely trying to bring in that sort of emotional aspect to the piece as well. If you could go to the next set of rough sketches. Mm -hmm. Oh, these ones. Yes. Yeah, so these were the first rough sketches that the artists had uh, submitted. And they are obviously showing this little creature being super aggressive. And um, these gentlemen are a little bit more used to doing high action pieces. And they said they really enjoyed the challenge once they sort of laid in and got going on it. They enjoyed the challenge of doing something that was a little less high action and more in the detail and the emo emoting part. Go ahead and go to the next screen. Yep. This is a rough color for them. Um, they are, they're very talented. Uh, <laughs> we were pretty surprised. Uh, aside from it being just a little bit dark, it's, it's, um, it's a beautiful, a beautiful layout of color for a color study. It helped us to understand exactly what details we were going to need to really flesh out to make these people look like real people. And go ahead and go to the next piece. That is where we started making some changes because, um, you know, Nyla's shirt and the botchling are almost the same color. There isn't quite enough light on Erland. That's the gentleman um, in the piece on Erland's face. And we just needed to have that light kind of display a little bit more of the character of the piece. And you can go to the final again. Here we have the final piece that you saw in the very beginning and you can see that the that the light is brighter on his face we've got a little bit more detritus on the ground in the background they've put a little bit more glow in the swords and of course the color of the botchling is has changed this is this is one of the witchers if if cody you want to take a moment and talk about erland just for a second okay yeah so uh, this piece was one of the stories in Witcher's Journal, uh, which is our bestiary for the Witcher TRPG, which follows sort of various stories from Erland of Larvik, who was one of the first witchers to be created uh, back several hundred years ago before the stories that we see in the Witcher video games and the books. Um, and Erland is a, a witcher from sort of the first age who really carried forward the sort of original, sort of knightly aspects of the witchers in the first witcher order. Um, he is the one who would eventually, after a bunch of events that you can learn about in Witcher's Journal, a bunch of sort of um, troubles of the first witcher order, he, he split off and founded what we now know as the Griffin School of, uh, of witchers. Yeah, you can see from his little, um... His little medallion there, the griffin. <laughs> so thank you, Cody. Um, so I wanted to bring that up because, you know, being a witcher isn't always a fun job. Yeah. And I would, I would suspect that he is not feeling excited about having to do his job in this particular piece, though he will do his job. He will always do his duty. But um, 
it's it's not a fun thing to come into a situation like this where the mother has passed away and the child has you know I have gone into say, neglect. Yeah. I have to Go say ahead. I do. Sorry, I'm just chipping in here. Please, um, oh, Linda, I do. Please. <laughs> I absolutely love the look of regret on her face, despite the fact she's clearly injured, and she's been through it, and yeah. we all know what's coming next. She mm. is not happy about it. There, that is that is pure regret kicking in there. It, she's it not was, looking forward to this. Yeah. It was very, it was very interesting, and I, I give, I give Jay and Bad Moon a lot of, a lot of credit for getting that because, you know, the scene is, is inherently a very, it's a very sort of unpleasant story because, uh, you know, uh, at this point. Neela and Erland have more or less just met. This is sort of their first meeting. They'll go on to sort of become sort of companions on and off again, much like Geralt and Dandelion or Zoltan and the like. And the situation is that basically Neela is here investigating basically the death of a close friend of hers at the hands of this botchling. And Erland being a very, generally a very honorable uh, sort of person, you know, tries to uphold sort of all of the knightly values he was originally taught, you know, years ago, uh, wants to find some way to transform this botchling into a lubberkin. As anyone who knows Witcher lore, you can transform this horrible creature into a less horrible, but still, uh, still fairly visually horrible little house spirit. But uh, it's going to be difficult because the mother's dead, the father's somewhere that they do not know. And Neela is very against this concept in the first place. She she believes that it is more, it is in a way more merciful to kill it because it is this baby that was rather horribly mutated by the magic of the curse that brings about botulins. So yes. it, it is and this interesting sort of sort of byplay of, you know, both of them sort of want the best for this this unfortunately cursed child, but there is this sort of difference of, of ideology that I think I think was really captured quite well. The you can see her pulling the knife there sneakily from the side because she is she's made the decision in her mind. And you're right, Linda, the, the look on her face is definitely <laughs> one of regret. Um, we could move to the next piece. I, I think we're gonna save all the questions about these pieces for after. So if you if folks want to just make note if you have any questions about specific pieces and then save them for the end that would be <clears throat> excuse me helpful we have a uh, a question a question sheet for anyone who has any questions i'll be i'll be keeping an eye on it so the next piece is done by kai carpenter and kai works traditionally mostly we get um artists who work digitally these days but there are a few people out there that are very good who work traditionally. One more, and this one more, one more. Oh. It's all sure, right, it's, no, it's entirely, it's, uh, it's okay. It's uh, being a, Windows gonna Windows. Mm. <laughs> it's a hater. Yeah. Uh, so this is a piece that there was a, there are several pieces of micro fiction in, you know, Witcher's journal. <clears throat> And we illustrated every one of them with a full page illustration, usually an action piece of some kind. Um, and this piece is illustrating Erland again, um, uh, coming across some panthers that he has to get rid of. <laughs> so he's definitely in the mix. Let me know when that piece is, is showing. It is, uh, yep, they are showing, yep. Okay, great, great. So he is definitely in the mix here and um, I thought Kai did a really excellent job of getting a sort of like, uh, kind of look on uh, on Erlen's face as he's being attacked by not one, but two. All he was trying to do was fill up his water canteen, man. He just needed to be left alone, but alas, that didn't happen. Um, so go ahead and go to the first yep. walking rough sketch. Done. The fun part about working with someone who is traditional are these just really scratchy, beautifully shaded uh, pencil drawings. I, I just, I love pencil drawings. And it, it turns out that most of the people here at Artal Soriate are just really fond of them. They're, they're a lot of fun. But you can see where he is just, he's given us three different, a couple of different versions of this blocking. But this is the first one. You can go to the second uh, screen if you like. 
Great. And, and this one is just a different approach. We decided against this because we wanted to, to see Erlen's face. We thought <laughs> that look of surprise would be a lot of fun. So this one got neglected. And um, the, the very next one, please. Great. Uh, this is closer to what we ended up with. Of course, that's, it's slightly different. It's never going to be exactly like the rough sketches, of course. And generally what an artist will do is they'll give two to three versions of a rough sketch and they will um, let us choose which blocking we like. And usually we just pick one straight out. We're like, ah, B, it's definitely B or whatever. But sometimes we'll have some changes to the blocking and it's great to get those changes in super early. If anybody's in the channel that is also an art director or wanting to do that kind of work, it's really good to get changes in at this stage because it's super easy to make them whether it's digital or uh, traditional. Go ahead and go to the next, uh, the next number five. So this one shows really what we ended up with in the end. Um, he basically just sat down for a day. I guess he was sipping coffee at a park and just sketched what was in his mind, which was really cool. And this is pretty much what we ended up with in the final. And go ahead to the next sketch. This is where for us, it started getting really exciting. We can actually see his face. We can see details of the armor. I think there were a couple of corrections in the armor that I ended up giving to the artist before I showed uh, Cody what, what he came up with. And um, what I really loved about this is I can already see that the light is going to be a character. The way the light's shining on his hand and how it's dark shadowed down at the bottom of his face, but very bright at the top of his face. I could already see this was going to be a a piece that I would consider moody as hell. Uh, and that was that was exciting to, to us, truly. Okay, you can go to the color study. Great. I love Kai because Kai does these color studies where he's not thinking about too much of the detail. He's just doing a blocking piece and quickly slapping some color in there. Sometimes you'll even see artists do a little color swatch at the bottom that'll show uh, just little squares of color, different main colors that are going to be in the piece. And I loved what he did here because it, this piece is very cold. And it's, it's, it's interesting because the action is very hot, right? It's hot action. It's, it's hardcore. He's definitely in it, right? In the throes of it, but the, but the piece is cold. And I just thought that was a great juxtaposition. You can go to the next piece, which is the more polished, a more polished piece. So here we have, it's a little more polished. Um, we don't have as much detail in the cats yet. And his face wasn't quite right. So he he's a, a European sort of witcher's version of a European gentleman. And he definitely looks a little bit more Asian in this picture. And I think that maybe it didn't come across very well when we showed the, um, showed the character turn. So we had to make sure that he matched the look of the character in the turn. So the uh, artist definitely went back to the drawing board with the face and spent about three days making sure that he was getting the face closer to what we needed. You can go to the next piece. And here we can see that he's getting a little bit closer in the face. He's got some more detail in the kitties. Uh, sorry, cats. Um, I love kitties. And um, I believe in the older versions of this as well, there, were a, there was trouble with sword switching, which seemed to happen quite a bit with artists. Yeah. It led to us ending up drawing a diagram of a drawing of him that said which sword was which. One is the silver, one is the steel sword. Um, but he ended up switching them in one of the earlier versions. We ended up switching them back. I love this. You can start seeing how there's some kind of maybe magical thing going on here in the piece with the light, which is great to start seeing that. And you can go to the final piece. Ta-da! And here we are at the final. So one of the requirements we have for working on Witcher is we require these pieces to be at 1200 DPI. And the reason we require them, minimum, if you're doing print, you want it to be 300 DPI. And print also needs to be CMYK format. It's very important because RGB, it'll still print if you do it in RGB, which is something you use in the internet. 
but it won't, it'll change the colors slightly and sometimes it'll change the colors a lot. So you wanna make sure that it's in CMYK format and we require 1200 DPI because maybe in the future we'll wanna print these much larger for a big poster at Gen Con or perhaps we might even maybe rumor that we might sell some posters later on in the future. I don't know, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Um, and so this is, uh, this is a big requirement for this. So when he, he's working, as you know, he's working traditionally, which means he has to photograph them and then make sure that he photographs them at such a size that they're big enough for our requirement. He has to, I wish I could demonstrate with my mouse, but he has to cut this piece into quadrants and then knit it back together in order to get it, get it to us at the right I, size. I actually never knew that. Yeah. It was, it was a step I never heard of. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's, and he's like, he's recently gotten a hold of me and said, man, if you could just tell me which ones you really need at that DPI, um, it's, it's a bit of a time consuming process. And I, and so what we've agreed that, you know, there's some little spot yellows and things like that. We probably don't need it that high a DPI. 600 will be plenty, which is our minimum for our Talsorian. 600 DPI will be plenty, but he, uh, but if, if we have a piece that's a big, beautiful piece like this, that's a full page illustration, we're going to ask them to be in higher DPI now. I think if I may, just before we move on, I think yeah. my, you were talking about the color, the, the, the color um, study. I think the, my favorite part of this piece is that it is in such a, it is in such a, a cold color palette but that obviously Erlen's eyes being, you know, the, the witcher sort of orangey yellow eyes really like stand out. They do, they pop, piece. don't they? <laughs> I, I was thinking it was lovely that his eyes match the panthers. Yeah, yeah. I just thought that, yeah. that that lined up beautifully, that kind of leapt oh, out yeah. on me. Oh yeah, that's really cool, yeah. <laughs> that's a good observation, Thank I have you. no <laughs> idea if it's deliberate or not, but <laughs> it kind of left at me. Okay. That's fantastic. All right, we can go to the next piece, which is the Erland character turn. Oh, Let boy. me know when that's pulled up. Oh boy. He says, <laughs> so we the spent Erland. Six years doing this. <laughs> yeah, six years. Easily. I, I, I aged. I, I certainly aged at least 10 years doing this piece. Um, the reason we were being so careful with it is because creating a new Witcher is a very serious thing. Um, can we talk a little bit about CDPR and our relationship, Cody? Yeah. Okay. So we have a relationship with CDPR where all of these pieces of artwork, the text for the books, every detail that we are creating does pass through a, an approval process with them. And it means that we're required to have two experts on hand that know the material forward and backward, both in the game and in the novels. And those two people, of course, are Cody Pondsmith and Lisa Pondsmith. And they worked very uh, hard on the material in order to make sure that it would pass. And, you know, usually we hit the mark. Um, they really enjoyed uh, having a new witcher from the Griffin School. They thought it was really cool. Uh, this piece of artwork is done by Mikhail Polonarchuk. And he goes by a couple of different names, but that's how you'll find him on his art station is under Mikhail. And he is really, I'm sorry? Oh, thank you, thank you. He is really dedicated to uh, making sure that the details are correct. And we normally do not spend the amount of time uh, making an artist go back on pieces as we did on this. But as we said, it was very important. We warned him of this in advance and we did pay him a bit extra in order to make sure that his time was well accounted for because artists need to get paid, man. God, if you're an artist in this community, don't work for free. Just don't work for free. I mean, if it's a friend or something like that, great. But if it's a company, make sure you're getting something for your, for your time um, that some companies will ask you to do that work for free, but you know what? You need to eat. And food costs money. It costs a lot more money right now during COVID too. So just make sure that yeah. you are getting the respect and make sure you get the credit in the book. Talk about all of that kind of stuff up front. Say, I want this much. You know, I want to have a credit in the book. I want a copy of the book at the end when it's done, if you decide that's something that you want. Those are all things that are very legitimate to ask for. And make sure... Um, at the end of this, if you have questions, questions about that kind of uh, that part of the process are acceptable during this 
uh, during this little seminar. So please feel free to ask. So now let's get into talking about Erlen. Okay. There were three character characters that we created that will that are repeat characters uh, for this book, and that was Erland, Mila, whom you met earlier, and Vaz, whom you'll meet later, the big galunk. Anyway, um, Erland is very specific. Uh, we ended up taking the swords off of his back in this picture because it was just confusing the artists, and we made a separate piece for those swords. But this is the final character turn. Every, every aspect you see of this from the gauntlets to uh, the tattoos on his head, the scars on his face, everything went through its own individual process of approval and ended up getting different iterations to make sure that it was exactly what we wanted to see. Erland is not Geralt. We didn't wanna have any, any likenesses to that other character. He's a different guy from a different time period with different ideals and different moods. He's, he's definitely a little more, um, he, looks, he looks pretty grim, but he's actually got a little bit more of a sense of humor and, and he's a, a bit warmer compared to, uh, compared to Geralt. All right, you can go to the next piece. This is a, a very rough sketch of the head of his face. And what we were just trying to sort of visualize is, is you know, how he would look with different lengths of beard because in a video game, you have the same character and the character tends to look the same all the way through. But when you're doing illustrations for a book, you can actually have them have a scraggly day or messy hair or dirty face, or maybe he's put on a little weight or he's lost a little weight. Those kinds of things can happen. So we wanted to just make sure that we had some, uh, some depictions of, of that in the face. Okay, you can go to the next piece. Cody and I got so excited when we saw these because yeah. we were finally starting to see him come to life. And we were just like, I mean, when I got this in, in my email, I'm not ashamed to say that I actually was squealing and kind of jumping up and down. I can, um, believe it. Yes, I can well believe it. It's fantastic. <laughs> and uh, uh, so the interesting thing when you're doing art direction, I work with people from all over the world and people have different levels of English. It wasn't until this point that I realized we were actually connecting very well. He, he reads English very well. His English back when he's writing is a little bit harder, which makes a lot of sense because he's had more practice speaking. So when you are writing an art script for somebody who is speaking English as a second language, you have to first write it how you want it. And then you need to go over it again and make sure that everything is very clear. You don't have any idioms in there. You, you make sure that your subject verb agreement is there so that they can better and more easily understand. Because the last thing you want is someone spending a week making these beautiful face options, you know, options for scars, and then having done it completely wrong because the language wasn't there. It's like a very silly thing. So right. that's, that's a good thing to keep in mind. Go ahead, Cody. If I can jump in, I think this the the really fun part about this one was, you know, the, the scars are so important to especially a Witcher character. I remember when we first sat down to get these done, uh, I sat down and uh, for reference, I marked out every major scar on Erlen's body and where it was and what it was from, so that yeah. I could send that to you so that you could get it to the to the uh, to the artist. He so drew very, a diagram. He drew a diagram and, and it was uh, it was really super helpful. I still hand that out to people when <laughs> when they're doing a picture, like if he doesn't have a shirt on or something, we're gonna need to see the scars that he's got now. And it also helps with the time period because as we're telling his story throughout a witcher's journal, time passes, obviously. So he may get more scars as time goes on and we need to know what time period we're talking about. So yeah, that was super enlightened, Cody, thank you. All right, you can go to the next piece. And this was, uh, we were looking at um, the tattoos. So we wanted him to have tattoos on his, obviously on the sides of his head, sort of the raven look. I, raven is like one of the things that I love most. So I was excited about that. And um, I thought it turned out pretty nice. We ended up having him, I ended up having him back off the tattooing quite a bit so that it looked more like it was a little bit aged because when he first did it, it just looked like they were painted on. But this man has lived and he's lived a long time. So the tattoos would definitely be a little faded over time. Go ahead and go to the next piece. 
here we get to pick our bodies. Um, one of the things I loved about his layouts here, he didn't spend a lot of time drawing them. He took little bits and pieces and he put together a collage just to get the idea across. That is paramount. You don't have to spend a week drawing down to detail what's going on. You can really honestly just start putting things together in a rough way. He even left the faces off, which for us, if we were maybe a little less experienced, we might've been distracted by the faces and trying to do corrections on the faces. But because he just presented what he wanted us to see, it made it much easier for us to look at. Okay, you can go to the next piece. In order to get to this point, we had given him pictures of different styles of, there were either pictures of these, of the details in this, or they were very deeply described. Like, I believe this shoulder piece with the spikes was uh, something we couldn't find a picture of, but we described it very well so that then he was able to draw it. It was, it was actually, it was a weird, most of this was a weird amalgamation of <laughs> sending, uh, Sending reference images from the Witcher video games, uh, you know, we referenced the uh, the the Griffin school armor you can get in the video games a lot, and I think the shoulder pads were specifically we um, we got images of Vesemir's spiked shoulder pads from uh, from the Witcher video games and said like kind of like this, but like fitting the the sort of full plate armor aesthetic. Yeah. Yeah, it was really fun. It was hard work, but it was really kind of fun going through this process. Okay, you can go to the next piece. And this is just a little more detailed out. Now we're, we're, we're having a lot less corrections at this point and we're just letting him, there's a point at which when you're an art director where you just have to let the artist art. And this is the point at which where you step back and unless you see a glaring problem, you let the artist bring your idea to life and then improve upon it. And that's, that's sometimes hard to do. In this case, I was excited to do it because every time I got another iteration, you can go to the next screen, I felt like it was just getting closer and closer. Um, he thought of things that we didn't even think of uh, to, to improve upon it, like the little me, I think the little me things were his invention. Yeah. Um, I don't know, sorry, knee pads, they aren't really knee pads. What do you call those? Oh. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, anyway, I'm not um, sure, but the shoulder ones are pauld pauldrons last I checked, yeah. I think, yeah. Um, I bet someone in the audience totally knows. Um, go ahead and go to the next piece. Okay. That's all about that. And there. we can see him here without his, uh, without uh, the, the protective gear on his head, and we can see his, his swords are a little bit more eked out there. Go ahead and go to the next one. And boy, we were just thrilled to finally get something in color. Go ahead and go to the next one. And then you can see that there's a character turn there at the very end. Okay, there's only a few more minutes. So I'm gonna probably breeze through this last one. This is the cover piece. Um, oh, I didn't, put, I didn't put in the final at the very beginning of the cover piece, that's okay. So our cover piece, do you have it? Oh, did I? Oh, I'm so sorry. Let's go back to that. Let's definitely go back to that. I apologize. Uh, yes. So um, I, 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 my window got closed and I thought I was done. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, so these are the definitely uh, the swords. This are the swords before they had all the runes that we wanted to have on them. Go ahead and go to the next piece. I did skip a bunch of things. I am so sorry about that. <laughs> the wonder of being on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Yes, shall we go to the next one? I'll tell you what, you guys, if you have any questions, or you wanna see this stuff later, you can always ask. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the uh, Bru Bruja. Are they, they pronounce it Bruja, right? Yeah. Okay, sorry, I say Bruja or Bruxa, so, okay, great. So what we have here is just, um, this is Martina Fakova, and Martina does a lot of artwork for Gwent already. She is got, what would, how would you describe her, the way she lights things, Cody? She, she uses light better than I think almost any other artist we've, we've hired. 
her 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 use of light is is really amazing. Yeah, it's she uses it like like it's a character um, in every piece that she's done. Here you can see the rough sketches. We're on the rough sketches, right? Okay, great. All right. So here you can see the rough sketches. This were just the blocking pieces that she was asking us exactly how we wanted to do this. Go ahead and go to the next piece. And this piece is by an artist, and I wrote it down on here. Oh, Jakob uh, Jakub. Rosalski. This piece is done by Jakob Rosalski, and Cody included it as part of the source material because it, it gives us a good mood. It gives us a good mood and kind of an interesting blocking and he was sort of getting the artist in that in that mindset with this piece. Go ahead and go to the next piece. Yep. The next piece, um, the next three or four pieces are us trying to communicate what we mean by an opera house, but we meant an opera house like this, but not obviously this elaborate or this late century. Um, this is just very uh, much later than we would have wanted to put in the book in terms of time periods, but it gives us a mood she wanted to include, go ahead and go to the next piece. She wanted to include a, um, a statue in the piece. And I thought that was, that was a great idea. Go to the next one. It's another source piece that we found. That's, this is a different lighting technique. It was a little bit more moody. I think we went with this lighting technique. Though we didn't go with a warm piece. We went with a colder piece. And then the final of the, of the uh, yeah, the very next one. And the next piece is just showing another uh, another version of the lighting uh, and how we're thinking about that lighting. And you can go to the next piece. Um, the next piece is the source material that we got her for what uh, Bruja looks like so that she would have a good idea of what she was trying to make. And of course, what we say is when it's a Bruja or any other creature, it doesn't have to be an exact replica. It needs to be something that you could tell is this type of creature, but make it your own, make it its own unique look because people look different, creatures look different, it's the same. And one of the key things we wanted to go for in this shot was that the, the Bruja was mid transformation from its sort of human form to its monstrous form. Yes, thank you, Cody. All right, go to the next piece. The next piece was where we got super excited. This is her pencil sketch. Um, I am so thrilled with it even now. It really was helpful to show what the room was going to look like, where the statue was going to be. We were concerned that the, or I was concerned that the statue might look a little bit too much like a person. So we addressed that right on early uh, to make sure that when she does the coloring of them that they definitely look, it looks more like a statue than, a, than an actual person. Um, next is a color study, which she did a, uh, she did a test of what the cover might look like. And obviously there were a few changes to the text. This color study was perfect. We could already see that where we wanted the Witcher to go, we, we could already see um, how the lighting was gonna be laid out. And we didn't even have any changes on this piece as I recall, Cody. No, pretty much it was this straight through. Go ahead and go to the next piece. We get more detail in the color, color study and um, a better understanding of what, how she's going to be and what her mood is. Next piece. This was really fun to look at. We, we ended up, uh, I think we might've made a couple of changes after this, but no, this was, this was definitely exciting for us to see where she progressed to. Go ahead and go to the next piece. It's, it's close, it's close. Um, we, there were some changes to the wing that we ended up, that end up happening later. The birds in the piece are finally there, which is great. I think the statue's head ends up getting a few changes to it as well later on. Go ahead and go to the next. Oh, that was the final, wasn't it? But in the, where, where are we at? I'm sorry. Which number are we on? Twelve. Twelve. Great. That was 13 you just showed, right? Yeah, sorry about that.
When in doubt, blame the techie. No, blame the tech, actually. <laughs> Not the techie. Techie's awesome. <laughs> okay, uh, this last one um, is labelled wing optional. Uh, is number 16. Oh, wing optional, yes. So this was, uh, this was labeled wing optional because we ended up going back to more of a, of a kind of that shaped wing. And also in one of the earlier versions, she had taken out the blood, but we added the blood back in and also the more glowing to the sword. There's like a little bit of atmospheric steam here at the bottom that helps with the uh, titling. So covers are tricky. Covers take a long time and you, they should take a long time because that is what's gonna sell your book. When your book is sitting on a shelf or, or it's sitting it in a drive-through RPG, that's what the person sees is what's on that cover. We wanted this cover to look really unique. We almost always see witchers attacking, fighting, battling. We love that, but they have another side. And this, this helps show the other side. He knows that this curse <laughs> happened to this innocent woman and that she's become this creature. Now he's gonna to have to go do something terrible about it. Because she's hurting people. Go ahead. It was important in this piece we want to carry across that basically, you know, uh, Erlen is a witcher because he believes that witchers are necessary. You know, he was created during a time period in which witchers were extremely necessary and there were monsters pretty much everywhere. But he, you know, much like most of the witchers we see in the video games, doesn't really enjoy being a witcher necessarily. Um, he enjoys sort of the camaraderie of being with other witches of the order. He enjoys, you know, gathering around the fire and telling stories of monster hunts at the end of the path and whatnot, but he doesn't necessarily enjoy killing, especially sapient monsters. Um, yeah. And we want to get across that, you know, Erland is aware that he is going to have to kill this Verja because she is a threat to the human settlements around her, but he is part of him wishes that he didn't have to. Part of him wishes that it, it wouldn't necessarily have to come to blood. Right. Yeah, that's a really good point. Just, just the other looking, thing about. Sorry. Go uh, ahead. Yeah. Just looking, uh, talking earlier about the level of the tattoos he had, the really bright, quite vivid blue tattoos. I'm looking at the very faded raven tattoo on the side of his head there. This is a guy who's been through it. That has had the time to wear down a bit. It's it's worn off. His hair's not pristine. It's more sort of functional, done at a camp rather than at a recent barber. That sort of thing. And I absolutely love that look. I think it's I think it's great. Oh, I'm glad that you do. I we're I'm particularly fond of this piece. I think Martina is incredible. I. I couldn't recommend her more highly. She's really good and she's excellent with her feedback as well. Uh, when you give her feedback, she's there to work with you, not just take it blindly, which is excellent. It made the piece better. Her, It was her idea to put the statue in. Uh, it was her idea to have this kind of rounded sweeping staircase as opposed to this, the stairs that we had imagined. So she, an artist's job is to help make the piece a little bit better if they can. And if it fits the mood of the piece for what you're doing, you should definitely take their advice. Um, the last thing I want to talk about before we open up to questions is um, Erland's two comrades, Vaz and uh, Mila, are both something that he really enjoys and appreciates uh, as part of, of his daily life and activity. He's not just utilizing people that he needs help from, but there's a real true comradeship. Thank you for mentioning comradeship there. Um, Cody, because I think it's super important to exemplify that and, and emphasize it, and that that comes into play here. Uh, being a witcher is a lonely life. If you can find a couple of people that can stand you and what you're doing in your lifestyle, you hang on to them. Okay. I, it was really, it was really a lot of fun. Just a small thing for you to question. It was really a lot of fun to carry that forward in the stories that we that we put together for it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this this sort of. Uh, this sort of friendship between these three characters who all are sort of bound together in their own way and, you know, come to a point where Erland, who's really mostly only interacted with other witchers, has come to form this, this friendship with these people who, you know, are so very outside of his order. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that too. I got the opportunity, Cody gave me the opportunity to write a couple of those stories and I really, really truly enjoyed um, 
I kind of invented Boz and we, we decided we liked him so much we were going to make him a, a repeat character. It was just a lot of fun rounding out Erland uh, with a couple of other characters that you know that those are his, those are his bros, man. He's, he's very dedicated to them and they, they, they the same to him. So that was really fun. So okay. in our last minutes here, uh, we, have, we have some questions. Uh, first, from Night Bites. Um, Night Bites asks, uh, when you commission a piece, do you go to multiple artists or do you always, uh, or do you always know that you have an artist X to do this because they're good at spe a specific skill set? That's a really very well thought out question. So I sometimes will have a specific skill set, like in the name of Martina Fakova. She, you know, when we said, oh, we want the cover, we thought of her the whole time because she'd done another piece for us and it was incredible. Uh, so in that case, it was it was decided. Sometimes I don't have enough artists, or I don't I don't think I have the right person in mind. I just go looking. I will cold call people. I am shameless. I will literally go looking for their their art station, right? And I'll get their information off of there. But then I go look. Like, do they have an email address somewhere? I will stalk people so that I can get their information. Not in a bad way, but you know, just so I can get their information because if they're good and I and I'm I'm like I'm gonna try and try. And I will try three times. So if I don't hear from them after three emails, okay, then I guess I get disappointed and sad and let them go. But it's it's all over the place with that is the answer to that question. Depends on the piece. I think there are definitely some pieces that as we're working out the art scripts, um, you know, there were definitely some pieces where we were like, oh, you know, like Martina, for instance, there were some pieces where we, we have a we have a piece we're working on, I think, right now that is like, oh man, Martina would be great for that. Like this specific thing would really lend itself to her style. Um, so I think there are definitely some times like there are a lot of there are a lot of like where I'm going through and I'm like, okay, we got this high action scene. Bad Moon will do Bad a really Moon. great job on that. <laughs> so I think yeah. that there is a certain amount of that. Yeah, and sometimes the artist says no for one reason or other. They they might be busy on something else. Or, or, or like that. So you always have to have a couple black backup, sorry, backup plans to make sure that you get the piece that you need. Yeah. So Alice asks, uh, Alice. How, how much do you pay per illustration and what are the art, artist rights for their illustration? Can they make their own prints or do you guys own all the rights? We, as Artelsorian, tend to buy all the rights for the pieces. So we are truly trying to make sure that we purchase the rights so we tend to pay a little bit more than what is the average for for game books because we know we're buying the rights to those pieces now that said we completely and utterly encourage people to share those pieces on social media to utilize those pieces to get other work to um, put them in their portfolios so they can do what they like as long as they're not reselling them and part of that is, a, is an agreement with there are different legal agreements we have with CDPR to create this product and stuff like that. So we just have to be super careful about doing that. So we just made it a rule to just buy the out, the rights outright. Um, if somebody was using them at, you know, to promote their work, that's totally fine. We okay. want you to have more work. I want artists to get paid. I want them to eat enough food and feel happy and comfortable and get health insurance and all of that stuff. We're not into the in the business of you know scamming for whatever we can get. So. <laughs> I I just love that your attitude is pay your freelancers. I thoroughly approve of this. It's coming sad coming that at it as a freelancer. Have to say it. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. It, We think we it's madness for you not to. Right. Yeah. Just just chucking in there that I've just just hopefully Prices. finished writing they ask um, a scenario for the next for the book of tales, and. The art script writing was part of it was one of the most interesting bits towards the end. Actually that was doing, you. That was me. Oh, fantastic! Uh, one of the, work, yes, one of the them way. was me, and this. I was impressed. <laughs> um, I, I was impressed. Bringing that in, in, in uh, trying to get what was in my head, which was very clear, over to uh, you talk about different language gap, the cultural gap just between UK US. Right. I could reference right. something, um, and. Pretty much everyone in the UK would at least go, oh, yeah, I know what you mean. And the response I got was, what's that? And I was yeah. like, okay, need more detail in there. Then. <laughs> I, I, do, I do hate to throw you under the bus, uh, Linda, but your, uh, your attention to detail in those, in those art scripts was 
amazing. Yeah. So it is absolutely uh, you stunning. I, you and I should get together later and I will let you know where you should be worried about the details and where you don't because it, I know that was a lot of work. It was a buttload of work. And so I can probably help you to make that a little bit easier by showing you where you can put the detail in and where you can pull back. That would be awesome. That would be extremely helpful. Uh, uh, I, else. And I think you're awesome. So I'm I'm super <laughs> happy we get to hang out. So anyway, um, okay, uh, one, one more question. One more, okay, uh, so I know that you said pricing. My apologies. I leapt ahead. That's okay. So pricing was, um, a, you know, if it's a full page piece, we're we're generally like a thousand to twelve hundred somewhere in that area, and then individual pieces can like if they're a quarter page, they're you know anywhere from a couple hundred dollars. Uh, there are a couple. There are some very very simple quarter page pieces up to about three fifty. Okay, last one last question. I think we have time. Yes. Um, Chrono Magistrate asks where you don't have armor or clothing references from games or books, um, i.e., you want to show something brand new, how do you go about deciding what that should look like? I think this is a really interesting one, and I kind of want to throw in here. Uh, we have from, two minutes. Yeah. Um, we spend a lot of time extrapolating based on what people look like in the video games and descriptions in the books. But we also spend a lot of time, I know one of our designers, James Hutt, uh, just recently for Book of Tales spent a ridiculous amount of time looking up, uh, like I believe it was Tudor era fashion because we could extrapolate roughly what era of, of European fashion most of the sections of Witcher were sort of designed off of. Yes. So I could say that we spend a lot of time extrapolating from books and video games, but also trying to figure out what real world references we can use based on kind of the time period. You got to know your real world history on this stuff sometimes, because like I was showing you those pictures of the of the opera hall uh, from the cover, you know, those were like Regency. They were super late. And if we had put those things in Witcher, it would have been looked really weird. It's just been really bizarre, especially on a cover, right? So it's good to know some of that history too. Um, I don't want to take this right, right, right to the end because I know people are probably getting ready to go to yet another panel. Yeah. So if we want to cut this with a minute, a minute to spare, that might be good. Thank you so much, you guys. This was Thanks really coming, fun. Everybody. I was super nervous, but you guys, this was really fun. Great questions too. Yep lovely questions i've just been i've been keeping a weather eye on chat and you've been absolutely smashing in there everybody see, really adores your artwork everyone just thinks that what you've come up with is incredibly beautiful and oh, that's... that's not just me being nice i'm looking at it and i've got it provably if need be um, <laughs> so that's very thank sweet you, thank you very much jay and thank you very much cody this has been absolutely fascinating and Witch's Journal, guys. Um, if you don't own it already, go get it. It's brilliant. We have another panel like this for Cyberpunk as well that, that shows the art of Cyberpunk that we're doing later. So if you're interested in that. Yep. Head off to uh, the Gen Con Online events list and get in on there. When everybody so, redeem your tickets and whatnot, I would yes. to re remind everybody of that. Yes. Oh, right. Everyone turn in your tickets. Ciao. Right. Ciao, Bellas. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Goodbye, guys. <laughs>